Stream processing is the process of analyzing and processing data in real time as it is being generated. This is in contrast to batch processing, which analyzes data after it has been collected and stored. This allows stream processors to provide real-time insights and analytics on data, which can be used to make better decisions faster. Stream processors typically work in three phases, ingest, process, and output. The stream processor ingests data from a variety of sources, such as sensors, devices, and applications, for instance, a payment processing system. The data is typically in the form of events, which are short messages that describe something that has happened. Once the data has been ingested, the stream processor processes it according to the set of rules. These rules can be used to filter, transform, and aggregate the data. The stream processor then outputs the processed data to a variety of destinations such as dashboards, databases, and other applications. Now it is important to note that ingestion, processing, and output stages of a stream processor can overlap. For example, a stream processor may start processing data as soon as it is ingested without waiting for all the data to be collected. Additionally, a stream processor may output data to multiple destinations simultaneously. In fact, often other stream processors are important downstream consumers. Networks of stream processors, each with their own well-defined responsibility, are very robust systems and are easily extensible. A bank may use a stream processor to detect fraudulent transactions in real time. The stream processor ingests data from the bank's payment processing system, which is generating events for each transaction. The stream processor then processes the data to identify any transactions that are suspicious. Based on factors such as amount of the transaction, the location of the transaction, and the type of goods or services being purchased. If the stream processor identifies a suspicious transaction, it outputs the transaction to a dashboard, where it can be reviewed by a fraud analyst. A stream processing architecture typically consists of three components. A data source, a stream processing engine, and a data sink. The data source is where the stream data is generated. This could be a variety of sources such as IoT devices, website, click streams, application logs, or social media feeds. The stream processing engine is responsible for processing the stream data in real time. It applies complex transformations and aggregations to the data and then outputs the results to a downstream destination. The data sync is where the processed stream data is stored or processed further. This could be a data warehouse, a data lake, or another stream processing application. And stream processors are often used in conjunction with message brokers. At a high level, a message broker is a system that acts as an intermediary between producers and consumers of messages. Producer publishes the messages to message broker and consumers subscribes to topics that they are interested in. The message broker then delivers the messages from the producers to the consumers. Message brokers are often used in conjunction with stream processors because message brokers decouple producers from consumers. This means that producers and consumers do not need to know about each other. This makes the system more scalable and resilient to changes. They also enable asynchronous communication between producers and consumers. This means that producers can publish messages without waiting for consumers to process them. This can improve the performance of the system. And finally, message brokers are designed to be reliable and scalable. They can handle large volumes of messages and can recover from failures. So in our example of a bank detecting fraudulent purchases, its payment fraud detecting system can act as a producer and distribute order events to a stream processor. The stream processor analyzes the order events in real time to identify fraudulent orders. If the stream processor identifies a fraudulent order, it publishes a notification to the message broker. The message broker then delivers the notification to a payment fraud detection system. Now there are a variety of ways to implement stream processing. If you are in AWS, one common approach is to use Amazon Kinesis data stream. Amazon Kinesis Data Streams is a fully managed service that makes it easy to ingest, process, and collect streams of data at any scale. To implement a stream processing application with Amazon Kinesis Data Streams, you create a kinetic data streams, you configure your data sources to write data to the Kinesis Data Streams stream, you create a Kinesis Data Streams application to process the data in the stream, and then you configure your data sinks to receive the processed data from the Kinesis Data Streams applications. And your stream processing application will be up and running in no time. Of course, this is oversimplified and we'll likely need further optimizations. For instance, you might need AWS Lambda to perform more complex data transformations or enrich data from the payment processing events. For example, you might need to perform data validations, normalizations, or joins with the other reference data. You may also need Amazon S3 to store the processed data in Amazon S3 buckets for long-term storage and analysis. This is useful for historical analysis and data retention. You might also like to set up a SNS to send real-time alerts and notifications to relevant stakeholders when specific conditions or events occur, such as fraud detection or high-value transactions 
And depending upon your analytic needs, you can also use Redshift or Snowflake for data warehousing, Athena for ad hoc querying, or QuickSight for visualizations to gain insights from the process data. Now, even though using message broker in conjunction with a stream processor is a common and often highly effective architecture pattern, depending on your use case and requirements, you should also consider directly interfacing with streaming service like Amazon Kinesis, especially if you want a simplified architecture and if your use case requires real-time processing of data streams. You can publish messages to Amazon Kinesis streams by using the AWS SDK or AWS Kinesis producer library. These SDKs and libraries are specifically designed to interact with Kinesis streams efficiently and are widely used for this purpose. Using AWS SDK, the payment processing system can integrate AWS SDKs into its code base to interact with Kinesis streams programmatically. The payment processing system can also make direct API calls to publish events to Kinesis streams. This can be done using HTTP request. In fact, you can also establish a WebSocket connection to the Kinesis stream to publish events in real time. Or you can also make use of microservices architecture. To implement an ingested microservice using Amazon Lambda, you would first need to create a Lambda function that reads data from the input data source and writes it to a message queue. You could then configure the input data source to trigger the Lambda function whenever new data is available. Now, if you have a complex application with many different tasks and dependencies, then using a microservices architecture can be beneficial. There are some challenges associated with using a microservices architecture, such as increased complexity, debugging difficulty, and monitoring challenges. Nevertheless, a well-designed microservices architecture can actually make this task simpler. In a streaming environment where data flows continuously through the system, microservices can be used to create a system that is scalable, reliable, and easy to debug. This is because microservices are small and focused, loosely coupled, and stateless. For example, if a node or a microservice in a microservices architecture fails, it is easy to replay messages through the node to debug the problem. You can also use the persistent messaging layer to examine the state of the system at the time of the failure. Additionally, you can easily monitor the performance of each microservice in a microservices architecture to identify any potential problems before they cause outages. Finally, it is easy to modify microservices without disrupting the rest of the system because they are loosely coupled and stateless. Sticking with one microservice for each stage of stream processing is a good approach for many applications. It is a simple and straightforward architecture that is easy to understand and maintain. It is also a good approach for applications that are still under development as it allows you to start with a small number of microservices and add more as needed. Here is an example of a one microservice per stage stream processing architecture. Here, the ingest microservice reads data from the input data source and writes it to a message queue. The processor microservice reads data from the message queue and applies complex transformations and aggregations to it. It then writes the process data to downstream destinations such as a data warehouse like Snowflake or another stream processing application. The output microservice then reads data from the downstream destination and publishes it to a real-time dashboard or it writes from the downstream destination to a data lake such as Snowflake for further analysis. Each microservice in this architecture is responsible for a single task, and the microservices communicate with each other using message queues. This allows the microservices to be scaled independently and make the overall system more resilient to failures. Now, the ingester microservice can be implemented in AWS using a variety of services, such as Amazon Kinesis Data Streams or Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose or other services options such as AWS Lambda or AWS Fargate. Now, it is also typical to ingest messages from SQS in an AWS ingester microservice. SQS is a reliable and scalable message queuing service that is well suited for handling high volumes of data. To implement an ingester microservice using AWS Amazon Lambda, you would first need to create a Lambda function that reads data from the input data source and writes it to a message queue. You could then configure the input data source to trigger the Lambda function whenever new data is available. One final note on system recovery and analytics. It is a common practice for ingesters to collect all failures post message processing. This can be done by either logging failures to a central logging system, which can be useful for troubleshooting and debugging purposes, or sending failed messages to a retry queue and the retry queue can be used to retry processing of the messages at a later time. 
And there are number of reasons why you might want to store all of the messages that your ingester service processes rather than just the field messages. Storing all of the messages allows you to track all of the data that has been processed by your ingester service. For example, if you need to audit your data for a security breach, you can review the stored messages to see which messages were accessed and when. Storing all of the messages can help you to troubleshoot problems with your ingester service. For example, if you are seeing data loss, you can review the stored messages to identify the messages that were lost. You can also use the stored messages to identify performance bottlenecks in your ingester service. Storing all of the messages makes it easier to replay messages in the event of a failure. You do not need to identify the failed messages. You can simply replay all of the messages and this can be useful for recovering from data loss or for testing new changes to your ingester service. Now, if you are on a tight budget, you may want to consider only storing the failed messages and this will reduce your storage and data processing cost. But it will also make it more difficult to audit your data and to troubleshoot problems. Overall, storing all of the messages can give you a more complete picture of data. This can be useful for data analysis purposes. For example, you can use the stored messages to identify trends and patterns in your data. You can also use the stored messages to create machine learning models.